Richie, what are the top five footballers' holiday destinations? There's a standard five. Ibiza, Vegas, Dubai, Algarve, Caribbean. All quite expensive places. Well, they are, but they are a staple of, of, of a footballer's lifestyle, I would say. Um, not many venture out too far. They stick to what they know. And it's usually off the back of a recommendation of... Of other footballers, um, I mean, I have to, I have to say, I've been to, I've been to all those places. The thing that jumps out of that for me, Chris, is there are, um, there's no Mediterranean islands, apart from Ibiza. <laughs> <laughs> apart, apart from Ibiza, that was the first on the podcast that Fordyce has been stood down on his knowledge. <laughs> I feel like I've let myself down. Well, you've just changed the geography of the world. Well, In my I'm head, I was sort uh, of thinking Iron Napa. Oh yeah, I well, thinking, yeah, no, of course, I frequented there um, in my young days. Um, I think. They've just traded that for Ibiza and Vegas. Mm. There's more financial benefits for a young player these days. That's probably the reason that Iron Apper and, and Player de, de las Americas <laughs> has, uh, has been cancelled, really, for the young player. So who books your holidays? Her name's Claire. I have to give her a big shout-out because she's amazing. I'll just throw a text to her, say, can you check some flights out for me to this destination? Can we do that now? Yes, yeah, do it. Okay, so I'll say something like, um, can you just check a flight to Buenos Aires in for... Uh, Saturday, how's that? Vanuatu. Vanuatu. Yeah. She just called Claire Travel on his WhatsApp. Chris. <laughs> right, so this has gone at 6.34pm. <laughs> check flights to Vanuatu, please. That's I mean, this is outside her working hours. Will she be on this, do you think? <laughs> it is late. Let's see, let's see how Claire gets so what, on. You know where you go on holiday and you can't help but slightly put on a bit of an accent. Um, oh, yeah. We've all seen it with managers, especially when Steve they... Steve McLaren. Steve McLaren. Joey Barton. Exactly. And they go abroad and they feel the need to adopt the, uh, the the accent. Have you ever found yourself in that situation as well? Well, it's a difficult one when your, say, waiter or waitress doesn't speak any English. Mm. So you do find yourself sort of talking English in a different way <laughs> to sort of get your point across. Give us an example. So um, let's... We're in Spain. Obviously, you know my gripes about paella. Mm. I've got a few gripes about that. Obviously, not having it for one person, things like that. Mm. But yeah, if she didn't understand me, I'd say like, um, uno paella. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought there was going to be more Spanish. <laughs> than the word for one. And the word for paella, which is the same. <laughs> uno. <just> said uno. <laughs> Right, let's put Crouch in a situation, right, where he's got to use the language. Give him a situation. <clears throat> We're in Sardinia. The waiter doesn't understand that you'd like a cold lager. Okay, so I'd say, un bier, grazie. <laughs> and that's, that's the problem. But that's the problem, isn't it? Because you know I mean? then that's a tabloid, there's a journalist on the table next door because yeah. he knows all you footballers are going to the same place. He's like, I'm sorry. And... And then suddenly that's the headline. <laughs> What's the headline that is? Crouch says, un bien gratis. <laughs> to be fair, I'll read that. <laughs> that is massive clickbait. <laughs> I'm going to give you one more. You're in Germany and I don't know why, you're playing golf in Germany. Okay, golf and, in Germany. Um, and you need to buy a golf glove because you haven't bought your golf glove. Glove? Yeah, so you're in the, you're in the pro shop. Okay. That glove. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Right, okay, you're at La Course, which hosted the Ryder Cup yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in 2018. Uh, here we go, you need a glove. You, you've forgotten your glove again. Okay. I'm in the push-up. Okay. Bonjour, monsieur. Bonjour. Comment allez-vous? Uh, so, uh, yeah, I don't know what glove is in French, but uh, like, let's call it limit. Okay, right? <laughs> oui, limit. Je, je vous voudrais oui. un mit, <laughs> s'il vous plaît. D'accord. Bon. <laughs> <laughs> Just check your phone, by the way, and see if Claire's got back in touch. Um, here we go. I can. Is this one way and for how many people? Oh, <laughs> come on, Claire. Why would it be one way? Can you ask her why it's one way? Seriously? Look at that. It's on, his, on Crouchy's phone. Chris, it's taken her less than 10 minutes to no, come back at half six at night with flights for Vanuatu. I think Claire thinks that you're in trouble. But you need to say to her, it's just me. I need to lie low for a bit. Just me. I'm lying low. See what she says. Yeah. Uh, just me, lying low, options. <laughs> <laughs> lying low as well. <laughs> lying low. 
One way for now. Put one way full stop for now. One way Whoa. for now. <laughs> <laughs> what? This is just amazing. It's like some sort of Netflix drama. Let oh. me have a quick look. Give me ten. <laughs> right. <laughs> Crouchy, don't you got to ask her next? What? Can you get me a false passport? <laughs> Come on. I reckon your phone book's amazing. You've got to a stage in life where you've got someone that you can call in any situation. You've got Claire Travel. <laughs> have you got have you got Dave DIY? Yes. I'll just I'm just going from A here, right? Alan Player Liaison. Yeah, this Alan is, Player I've Liaison. Got Albert Mallorca Boat. Albert. <laughs> This is so good. <laughs> These are just A's. Yeah, yeah. Alfie here. No, what he's got in here is their <laughs> first name and their use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Alice Boat. This is how he sees the world. <laughs> this is it. It's a I'm name just and Chris you... podcast, yeah. am I? <laughs> Clive Allen. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, can we, throughout this podcast, can we go, we'll do the A's today. We'll do the A's yeah. today. Right. Right. Great scout. And All then right. we'll do another letter oh. every time. <laughs> this is a good one. Ant, in brackets, deck. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> it does. And open brackets, deck, close well, bracket. Deck as a, as, oh no, let's hold on deck. We'll, yeah, wait, we'll get there in four episodes time. time. <laughs> Should we see how Claire's getting on in Vanuatu? <laughs> She's probably onto the ambassador of Vanuatu right now, like negotiating some sort of some exit. Sort of witness <laughs> protection. <laughs> Oh my god, Claire's got back to me. <laughs> it's seven and a half grand. <laughs> she said, Well, this is a place that isn't easy to get to. She is phenomenal. But also that that price of seven thousand seven hundred and eighteen pounds and forty seven well, pence. Three flights there, it's business class. It's business yeah. class. Yeah. What she's done is got you out of the country in comfort. <laughs> in twenty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> she's phenomenal. Unreal. Claire yeah. Travel is an amazing woman. Should we send her a little voice note? Yeah. yeah. I think you've got to explain for sure. Hi. Claire. Hi. <laughs> do, you, do you know what I'm doing at this precise moment? Go on. Record, recording my podcast. <laughs> you <are such> a <laughs> 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 I says to me, I don't know. I said you were the best at your job, right? And you came up trumps, Claire. You came up trumps. To be perfectly honest with you, I got you good flights as well. British Airways, like business class. <laughs> oh, Claire, thanks so much. Bye, 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 bye. Bye, bye. She's better than we could ever wow. have imagined. I told you she was good. Could you sound her out for me and Chris in economy? <laughs> <laughs> Right, let's get back to some more listener messages about spotting footballers on holiday. Here's one from Toby. Toby says, I remember hearing how players used to take numbered shorts on holiday as you couldn't buy them in the shops and it was the best way to show off that you were a footballer. Yes. This used to be a thing? That was a thing, yeah. That was a thing. Um, you take, yeah, like you say, your squad number, shorts abroad. Um, I mean, I still... I still lounging around the house. I still wear a squad number shorts. So, Crouchy, what have you been up to uh, recently? Any stories? Uh, well, this week is my little boy's birthday party. Yeah, I mean, he's only two. Do you know what I mean? So it's like you, you didn't do too much. But we did. Uh, he had like he loves fish, as we've mentioned previously. Um, and so we had, he had a load of balloons, quite a lot of balloons, and he had like little fish, and it was it was great. And then we did a bit, a bit of pass the parcel. And what's the one? Like, was it was it musical bump? So we have to sit down. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we could play. We brought it all back. Are you allowed to we win those at your own party? I can never. You, you know, with pass the parcel. Yeah. The person, the, the parent who has wrapped the parcel knows how many layers there is. And they're also the ones who stop in the music. So usually the rule is that it can't be the birthday boy or girl, can it? So you have to time it so that the next oh, person gets I'll, I'll have to be, I'll have to be honest, she, she had a present for every kid that was there. Really? Yeah, she was very efficient and she had three wraps and she knew when to stop it on, on which kid. It was, and it, no, one, it was, no one was crying by the end. But that's the modern game, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I think there should be winners and losers. Um, doesn't matter what age you are, really. I mean, it's a, it's a tough industry out there. It's a tough Look, world. Hang on. So you think some two-year-old should go away from a party as losers? No, well, but you shouldn't expect... It's a game, isn't it? Yeah. It's a game. There's winners and losers in every game. You know, I mean... Or draws? <laughs> yeah, but at the end of the season... <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, Crouchy, you know that tricky point where the kid has the parcel, right? They've already won one of them. And, and then the parcel the hand goes on it. to the next one. Mm. Yeah. The other kid's got their hand on it. You, the music stops at that point to try and give the other child a chance. Mm. But the other one's claiming it back. Do you go to VAR? Right? That's a difficult one. <laughs> I, this is an amazing thing that we actually, we actually, I can't believe you said that. We actually did go to VAR a couple of points. Did you know what it was on? It was on the musical bumps. So you know when you get the, you need to get your bum on the floor. A lot of people were, t- were going the low dance, you know what I mean? The so, so their bums were closer to the floor. So then we brought in, we did, so uh, Abby's brother filmed the whole <laughs> process and then we reverted back to slow-mo and, VAR'd it <laughs> and I have to say it cleaned a lot of problems up did it? yeah it did did people think VAR's a bad idea honestly at parties? Well, we've proved that it can be done <laughs> it can work it can be enforced correctly <laughs> first time I've ever heard of VAR being used at a children's party it's almost certainly not going to be the last time now no because honestly bring it in I think, I think people should bring it in for games like that as well you know because you can you clear it up to the kid you go look no that was passed on <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that parcel was passed. <laughs> Even if it's just a little finger. It's, you know, it doesn't matter what it is, it doesn't matter how much it is, but you know. The line on the screen. Technically passed there. It's been passed. Hi, it's Peter Crouch from That Peter Crouch Podcast. If you like what you hear, click the link in the description. Click the link in the description. Yeah. What does that mean?